Hey everybody, today I want to talk about Pedro Lorenco. I think that's why you say it. I think he's actually French and I'm just saying it with the Spanish accent. I don't know why I do that. Anyway guys, I'm going to be doing a review on the lipsticks of the new collection from MAC Cosmetics. And these shades are very, very classic, pretty much very common shades. Now a lot of you are like, oh but they're so dupable. Yes, they really are, but they're be the beautiful packaging, the nice finish. Um, I don't have too many bad things to say about them besides that they're common. So let's start. Um, the four shades all come in these rubberized black tubes. If you're familiar with, um, this one got really messed up today because I took it out with me and I was holding an orange and then I gripped onto my lipstick and kind of got, ugh, so I gotta wash this one. So I just, I just grabbed this out of my purse because I'm wearing it today, so please don't don't judge me guys anyway um, if you're familiar with NARS packaging that's what it feels like or if you're unfamiliar about NARS packaging if you remember the temperature rising packaging from last year that brown packaging has the same feel so it's not your classic glossy tube now these are slightly higher priced because they are in the limited edition packaging. They are $17.50 each. With tax, they come out to $19 and change, um, at least um, in, in price brackets where their tax is like 8%. So that's pretty higher. It's almost $20 a lipstick. So for a lipstick shade that's pretty dupable, you're not really buying these for the shades unless you don't have many reds and you want to step out of your boundaries. So um, I'm going to start with the shade I'm wearing on my lips today, which is Ruby. And this is a very very typical red. I haven't actually determined what dupes it, but really it's just your classic run-of-the-mill red. The packaging is very similar to the holiday collection packaging that was black and um, gold. Similar to the holiday packaging that we've seen for 2013, that um, Divine Nights, that gold and black packaging, so this is pretty much very similar. Um, it also reminds me of Revlon. Every time I see gold and black, it's classy, but it reminds me of Revlon. So, all the lipsticks in this collection are amplified, so I'm going to swatch this up. They are very opaque, that's one swipe, that's two. They're very, very opaque, they have an amplified finish, they have a lot of pigmentation, they go on very smooth, very creamy, so if you're the kind of person that likes high pigmentation, as you can see, it's very true to the tube, if you like high pigmentation but you don't like all the pull and tug of a matte, and you don't like the sheerness of a cream sheen, this might be your perfect little mecca of a lipstick. Um, a few notes about it though, because it's not a matte, um, it's not going to last as long as I'm at. I got about solid five, four or five hours with it. It lasts even longer if you put a liner under it, like Red R-E-D-D -D under Ruby works phenomenal. Um, but otherwise, if you just wear it on your lips without a prep and prime or without a liner, you're going to get a four or five hours, depending on what you're doing. So again, this is Ruby. Now let's go to the next shade, because I think I've talked about Ruby enough. As you can see, I really like it. I love just the classic reds. Um, the next shade is... Let's do, let's do True Red. Now, True Red leans a little bit orange, so it's a little bit deceptive. Um, it leans a little bit orange in comparison to Ruby, but I guess you can call it a True Red. It's kind of like that Fire Engine Red or like Red Sports Car Red. It's, it's, for me, I don't know, it just looks a little bit orangey, but um, I can see why, where they're drawing their inspiration from. And as you can see, one swipe even more opaque than Ruby. Um, they are similar in shade, but you can see that this one's slightly darker. Um, I believe this one leans a little bit more blue, whereas this one leans a little bit more, I guess, red. A little bit more, um, like that sports car. That's what I think of. Anyway, both look, um, they both kind of look similar on the lips to me. Like, I feel like if I was wearing one or the other, you wouldn't really be able to tell unless you had them side by side. And it might also depend on your skin tone. Like, if certain lipsticks lean a certain shade, you might see a bigger difference in these than I do. Um, let's get to the next one. The next one is Roxo, and Roxo is a little bit darker. It's the darkest shade of all three. And this one has like a violet undertone to it, and I like it because it stands out. Like, whereas these two, you can't really always tell the difference. This one, you can absolutely tell the difference. And again, extremely opaque in one swipe. Um, it's not actually streaky on the lips, but it's very, very opaque, and like I said, it has that violet undertone. This can look purple on a lot of people, a lot of different skin tones. Even on my hand, it just in comparison looks like a purple shade, not a red shade. Um, excuse my nails, I have not had the time to paint them. Um, so yeah, don't hate me for that, I'm just neglecting my nails right now. Um, and the last shade is a peach beige. It's called peach, be peach beige. And it's a very peachy shade, like it's extremely light. I was actually shocked at how light this was on my skin. 
Um, it's lighter than my natural skin tone. It's very, very beigey. Um, I saw some comments on Instagram of how you can make a shade like this work. Well, some ways that you can help it work with your skin tone is liners. If you put a liner that's closer to your skin tone uh, around your lips and then blend it into the shade and have this be in the center, that'll help it look like you're not so dead or it'll help it look more wearable on your skin tone. Um, I feel like the darker you go in terms of skin tone, you might not like this shade too much. I just, you know, that's an opinion, you know, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I just feel like darker skin tones may not appreciate this shade too much, or they may, I'm not sure, depending on your skin tone, your undertones. For me personally, I put it on and I liked how nude it was, but I definitely needed a liner with it to kind of make it balance out on my lips itself. You know, itself on my lips. Anyway, it was very, very opaque. I liked that it was a light shade that wasn't wasn't streaky even though it wasn't a matte. Um, one thing is when you press your lips together with the shade, when you go like this, it does kind of like separate so you'll have like a line. So don't do not do too much with the peach beige um, because if you have pigmented lips you're going to start seeing it. So it's not streaky initially in application but the more you move your lips the more you're going to see like it just moves. It doesn't stay still. So you might want to prime your lips with something liner or just a prep and prime before you apply that shade. Overall, I liked this collection. I liked the shades. I'm a huge, huge fan of red, um, and I feel like women can never have enough reds, and if those reds are gonna come in some kick-ass packaging, then you know what? I'm sold. So if you're the kind of person that collects MAC, or you love pretty packaging, and you love those classic red shades, or those nude shades, or just the classic shades, this might have been right up your alley. If you're the kind of person that has plenty of reds, you didn't really like the packaging, you're saving up for Osborne's, you don't really need it because, like I said, these are very dupable and there are other formulas that I feel like are much better, like the mattes, the retro mattes, etc. Um, this is just novel and nice to have. That's my opinion. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to have picture swatches and please follow me on Instagram. I'm Recycled Stardust.